And I'm gonna no, mute you all. Okay, I'm gonna mute you all. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna gavel us open. Meeting is started, yay. Um, I'm so happy to see you all in one form or another. I really miss our meetings. Um, I'm so glad we have this forum that we're able to spend a little bit of time together. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we are planning for the next few months. As I said in the president's note, um, we're getting up to speed slowly, but we have some fun things planned. And so you'll get notification for all of those things as we go along. I do want to say to a couple of people, I want to say some, a big thank you to Deborah and to Paula, who have both been working so hard um, putting in countless hours to get ready for this meeting. So, you know, applause. If you feel funny applauding in your living room by yourself, go ahead. Um, but they deserve a lot of credit for getting everything going here. Okay, so um, one of the new things that we had planned to do this year is we're going to have a sewing studio minute at every meeting when um, Kelsey from the sewing studio or maybe one of the other employees is going to share a little bit of um, share something with us from the sewing studio. So I have a little video. Um, just before I show this, just a couple technical notes. We have quite a few videos. We have a sound level set, which we're not adjusting because we can't adjust the sound for everybody. So you're responsible for your own sound level on whatever device it is you're using. And also um, the tech aspect of this, uh, we're not techies, so just bear with us a little bit if it's a little clunky getting stuff going, but it'll, it'll all work, I promise. All right, here's Kelsey. Hi, Orlando Modern Quilt Guild. Kelsey here from the- Oh, shoot, wait, hang on. I forgot to share it. Hang on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my glitch. I forgot to share the content, my problem. Hang on. Hi, Orlando Modern Quilt Guild. Kelsey here from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore in Maitland, Florida. And for the past 30 days or so, we've been operating with limited access to the sewing studio in what we call our pop-up shop. This used to be the Bargain Annex. And for the past 30 days, we've been letting one person in at a time to collect their um, curbside pickup and uh, we really appreciate everybody who's placed orders with us the past month. We appreciate all of you. Come Monday in phase one of the governor's plan, um, we will open up at 25%. That means we will be letting five customers in at a time. Uh, we will still continue to service machines, sell machines, and offer curbside pickup. I just wanted to keep you posted on what's going on here, and I hope you have a great Zoom meeting. Thank you. Okay, let me go back. So were you all able to give me a thumbs up? Were you able to see that? Were you able to hear it? Yeah, good, okay. Uh, let me just admit a couple more people to the meeting. And okay, so now we're gonna move on to Deborah's portion of the meeting. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to me and my sewing room here. I did get the lawn guy to come back later. <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> about that. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is go over, it's a wrap with Debbie Manuel. Um, I don't know if Debbie's on the video, scroll through the, 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 um, the cameras and see if she, you can see her there. She but did. I just made some announcements. Are you there? Hey, That's there good. you are. <laughs> there she is. So we're going to um, continue with, with, it's a wrap, if you have, um, oh, first the number. Debbie, what number did you pull for us? Number two. All right, number two. So all of you that have signed up for It's a Wrap and have a list of, I think it's four UFOs, right, Debbie? That's right. So um, look at your list and whatever is number two, 
that's the one you are going to begin working on and it's going to be due the month of i believe it's june correct you have two months so you should be able to show it um, in the july meeting the july meeting so if we have a july meeting we'll be doing it live and in person otherwise what we're asking and if you'd want to do this anyway is to send your finished number two ufo to debbie manuel at her email address yes, yes. If, uh, if you need a copy of the roster, email the Orlando Modern Quilt Guild's email and we'll send you a copy of the roster. So that'll be at the July meeting. And just as a reminder, it's not too late to join It's a Wrap. You can join this group anytime during the year. Right. Uh, the next thing is I would like to ask if anyone in the group would like to host a virtual so day. So similar to this, we're just going to organize some groups to get together and sew on Zoom together. Mostly handwork because the noise of the sewing machine, it, it might get in the way, I don't know. But if you're interested in being a host, not participating, right now I'm just looking for hosts or hostesses that can schedule a Zoom meeting and have um, a sit down so day with a small group. So send me your email if you can do that in the next couple of days, that'd be great. Any questions on that? Just unmute yourself or type in chat if you have any questions. All right, the second ask I have of you, and I see Wendy here, this is for, um, for you long arm, people out there. If you have a long arm business, whether it's a full long arm business, or if you just do it for a few people like me here and there, we are going to do a long arm panel. If you're interested in participating as a panelist, again, please email me. Uh, Jane asks, would we use the Guild Zoom account? And Edie, do you have an answer to that? Can we use yes. the Zoom account? She's in her head, yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. She's shaking her head yes so that it can be more than 40 minutes. So yeah, just email me um, some questions or just to volunteer for either the virtual so day or if you are a long armor and want to um, participate in something that we're gonna call a happy hour with long armors. Uh, next, we have Yannick with the block of the month. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, and of course, I had to use. Um, hi. <laughs> so I hope everyone is doing well. And um, I had to use a different computer today, so I don't have my photos on this one. I just realized <laughs> I was looking for it a minute ago, and I don't have them. But if you were to look on the blog today, you will find the post already listed. And this month, we're going to be doing what we call a modern strawberry block. So um, it was a pattern release from the Modern Quilt Guild. It is adorable. And um, we are actually going to use the colors that they have in their pattern because I think it's also really cute. So the the main part of the, the fruit, the, the strawberry part, is going to be blues, any shades of blue. And then you can have a different color background and a stem portion for your strawberry. So I put the information on the blog and there's really cool photos, including one that they used um, like three different variations of colors and how they made like a, almost like a, a mandala type quilt of strawberries. It's really, really sweet. Um, so that's uh, going to be our blog for this month. And also on the blog post, if you will take a minute and scroll down to the bottom after you read through all the directions and see the pretty pictures, um, if you'll take a minute to fill out the one question survey regarding our um, potential plans for getting uh, winners selected for previous months that we've had blocks made, but we haven't been able to meet in person. Um, we're, we're trying to devise a plan of getting um, blocks selected and having everyone mail them to the winners each month instead of waiting for the next meeting and having like 50 blocks to give out. Um, <laughs> so if you um, can, when you have a minute, um, please take that survey. Um, it's literally one question. I wanted to make it easy. 
and um, that way we can kind of get an idea of what people would be interested or not interested in doing. And if you have alternative ideas for the block of the month, please feel free to email the Guild as well. I would love to hear other suggestions um, just because we're open to ideas uh, since we don't know when we will be able to actually meet again. So um, we'd love to get your input and participation on that too. All right, um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Yannick. Um, uh, I, I had to laugh. I just saw Leslie's cat's tail curve up over the screen. It was funny. I had to close my dog in another room or he'd try to be right in here with us. Um, Yannick, thank you for keeping up with the block of the month. And as we, as she said, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do all of these things that we normally do together virtually. So um, again, the guild email is orlandomodernquiltguild at gmail.com. If you have a directory, of course, you can email Yannick or Deborah or I directly. Um, we are working on getting the new uh, directory with the pictures out. We're gonna get it out next month. Um, it'll come to you virtually. So you do need to be a paid member to get that by um, next month. Um, we're gonna move on to our community outreach with Sue. And guess what the topic is? Masks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you've gotten a couple of emails recently. Um, number one, I wanted to point out that Pam Paisley still has some of the Halyard 600 fabric. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the fabric that they use in autoclaving the uh, instruments. And the pieces are three by three feet or four by four. So she still has some of those if you want to um, uh, email her about that. And I think all of her contact information is on the roster from last year, and it also was in the email from uh, April 17th. Um, another contact that we've had has been a journalist from the Seminole County Life magazines. So those of you who live in uh, Seminole County, if you would like to be part of an article that she's uh, doing, please let me know. Just email me or text me and I'll forward you her, her contact information. Um, some of the other groups that are working on masks in the area, Orlando Face Mask Strong, the link uh, was in the newsletter. So if you're interested, if you've got some masks and you don't have a place for them, some of these groups are doing, um, you know, getting information from individuals who would like masks for their family. So if you've got some masks that you don't have a place for, Orlando Face Mask Strong is one of them, and Army of Masks is another. Both of them have been, uh, you know, doing a really great job um, electronically as far as keeping track of who is making masks and who wants them and it's drop-offs and mailing and things like that, but whatever. Okay, and we've also been in contact with uh, Orlando Health. I just talked to their community relations person yesterday. And as of yesterday, they have collected and dispersed to their non-clinical staff over 12,000 masks. So these are ones that have been made from, they have several different sewing groups that they have all the time, but these are from everybody in, in this area, you know, donating masks. So they're going to continue the mask collection. Again, if you do not, if you have extra masks and you're not, you know, making them for friends, family, neighbors, and all that, um, they're going to do, change the drop off. It's in most of the main lobbies. I'm sorry, I'm looking down because I'm reading my notes um, on all the campuses, but they do ask that you use a form. Um, and the form was in our email from uh, April 6th. So if you're looking for the form, it was in, in our email to you. Um, it's one of those things that they're going to continue them. I think as long as we're going to be told to wear masks in public, they're still going to be collecting the masks also, because they were going to try to come up with two masks for each of their non-clinical staff members. You know, all of those clerks and, and people who are in the hospital and, and in contact with the nursing staff and doctors and such, they're not in contact maybe directly with patients, but they're also at risk. So anyway, keep those going. So if you want any of these addresses, you can email me or text me and I can email you the form, whatever. Um, 
what we'd like to do later on, we're not going to try to do it now because there are some people who are done with their masks. There are some that are still making them. We're going to uh, do a survey when this is all done and try to get some um, final results. Who did you make your masks for? How many did you make? Um, any stories you might have? And if you've got pictures of people who have used your masks or such, that would be really great too. Send them to Paula because we're going to try to collect those and just kind of archive them, um, you know, so that we'll have some stories and pictures and things like that when this is all over. Okay, so on to ongoing projects are still going, uh, you know, hey, make those placemats if you're tired of masks, and uh, go ahead and do the drawstring bags. Jan is still collecting those. Um, in June, we're going to be introducing a new uh, community outreach project, and I don't have all the details on it yet, but it's baby quilts. So you get to work with some really cute fabrics and come up with whatever designs you might have. Um, I'll have information in the newsletter um, next month and at our next Zoom meeting, I guess. So anyway, happy uh, sewing, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks. Sue, thank you so much. I want to say thank you to you and Kathy who have really spearheaded this effort. I know it's not been easy. I know you're still getting lots of requests. Um, I don't know if you saw the email, Orlando Face Mask Strong. Their goal is 100,000 masks because they have so many outlets for them. And you mentioned Orlando Health wanted to have two for each of their non-clinical staff. What's that total? What would that total be? Well, Mark, when we first talked to him, said that that was something like 50,000, but I think he was talking about all of their employees, not, he wasn't dividing it uh, clinical and non-clinical, so. Um, but when I did talk to the communications person yesterday, um, they have received masks from Orlando Face Masks Strong and Army of Masks. So oh, good, so they're, they're that's part of that number. Of organization. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is our mystery quilt so along as as you um, ho as I hope you know by now we're doing our very first mystery quilt as a guild and our participation has been really good. Um, so one set of instructions came out last month. Of course, I'm already behind, but <laughs> that's just a given at this point, I think. Um, you can still join. You can join anytime because this is going to go on all this year, all of our fiscal year. Um, you need to email either email the guild, as always, or email Mary Smart directly if you would like to um, join in. And she is going to send the next uh, set of instructions out today. So those of you who have signed up, you'll be getting those. I have some pictures. Um, she has a couple of little um, photos of this next part of the project. Can you see this? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Yep, okay, good. Um, so this is, uh, it's flying geese. Oh, let me minimize you guys out of the way here. You're gonna be making flying geese as this next part. And as you see, it breaks down from like a little four patch. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of times, <laughs> I don't have the greatest success with flying geese. I have a lot of trouble getting them to be, to come out even. Mary said that this was the easiest flying geese tutorial or, or method that she's ever used. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to get to that step. Um, any, any questions about that, just put it in the chat. Um, again, not too late for you to sign up. So now we have um, some more videos. We have some um, sewing room videos. You're gonna see Paula's, you're gonna see mine, and you're gonna see Deborah's. And I, I think what I'm going to do is just, I'll just play one right after the other without any commentary in between that. So let me get those pulled up for you. And we'll start with Paula. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my sewing space. I love this room. This used to be a dining room but I got more use out of it as a sewing room than a dining room, so I switched things all around. There's where I look at my patterns and compare everything online, all that kind of stuff. That's a big storage thing right there from Ikea with all kinds of projects in it that I haven't done yet. <laughs> there's one of my sewing areas. Oh, there's my monitor, and what has it got on it? Oh, 
the Orlando Modern Quilt Guild meeting from last month. How about that? I can uh, do lessons. Mostly I just watch Netflix though when I'm sewing. So <laughs> with that monitor. Uh, let's see. I've got another machine over here. We got some embroidery going on. Right down here is where I keep I keep fabric down here. I keep solids and some more project bags. There's a big bag of stuff I need to get to. I don't even know what's in it. Embroidery <laughs> thread. This is my mantle in this room with the fireplace, and I just like to keep all kinds of stuff up here. Hi! Just my happy place. Got all kinds of cute stuff up here. Here's my cutting table. Get a lot done with this. I love it. There's our improv project, our group project from last year. And there's Deborah's tiny pieces class. So I have a lot of other areas in this house that function for hidden storage, but we're not gonna go through all those. This is basically where I sew and where I love to hang out. See y'all later. And next is mine. Okay, welcome to my sewing room design wall, cutting table, notions and tools, storage, quilt magazines, sewing table, sewing assistant bear, ironing board, my desk, workstation, um, an extra work table for things that I actually have in process at the moment. Um, my basting boards are back in the corner that Marge Cree's husband made for me. That is the spin bike, my torture machine. And here's my stash. There's some UFOs, some more UFOs, more stash, more stash. And bookshelf is full of uh, quilt books, cross stitch patterns, quilt patterns, and notions. So there you go. And last is Deborah's. Oh, we said that we're Oops, not going to. Let have me start this from the beginning. Oh, we said that we're not going to have any audio, but we're going to have a little bit anyway. So there's a bear and a pair of jeans drying on the long arm. It's my new chair that I love so much that really rolls kind of great. The quilt that I'm working on. I'm going to spin back around to my shelf set that contains my threads and just most of my long arm things back around this way goes into my actual sewing room. This cabinet is usually up against the wall, but because of the project that I'm working on is differently located. Here's my fabric stash. That's all of it right there. There's dog food. And back around again, sorry. So I usually um, start off with a sweatshirt on in the winter and then throw it on the floor when I'm done. And there's my new design wall. So thanks for taking a tour with me. Did you like those? It was fun, right? Yeah, I, I know the video might be, the video and the audio might not be syncing, but at least you can still see. Um, I have to say, Paula sent her beautifully filmed one in in her beautiful room. I was almost embarrassed to put mine up after it, but you know, hey, it's an honest mess. Um, I do think I have a little problem with uh, both fabric and sewing patterns, but we can discuss that later. I'm probably not alone in that. <laughs> so keep sending those videos in please there were about 20 people who initially responded and said they would send their sewing room video in we would love to show at least two or three at every meeting um, you can text it to me I can make it work so whatever the easiest way for you to get that to me is that would be great but if you would just send it right to me um, let's see oh so we're gonna move on to programming back to Deborah hey am I gonna introduce this video I guess um, I just have not necessarily a tutorial to show you or to share with you, but just some something that I'm working on. If you click on the chat button and write a question, I'll answer it um, at the end of the video. 
So go ahead and roll the video. Sorry, can you see that? Yep. Okay, sorry. You're <laughs> good, you're good. <laughs> Paula, can you stop it? Yep. Making this. Yep. Can you stop it for a second? Somebody, Kia? Yeah. Somebody, we can get back to the other screen. Yeah. Which one? Pia? Pia, you yeah. need to mute yourself, please. Oh, sorry. So, I, ha I, have, I have my. Please mute, please mute yourself. We can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Can we start the video again? Yep. We'll Thank start. you. Not a problem. Hey, everybody. Orlando Martin Fulfield. Um, Deborah Jalbert here at my house and in my sewing room. We're going to do a quick demonstration on how I make a graffiti applique quilt. The first thing I'm going to show you over here is some of the fabrics that I use in making this. Um, I have right here Misty Fuse, which the back of the package shows you exactly how to use it. So we're not gonna go over that too much, but I do wanna show you a little piece of Misty Fuse and how it looks like a spider web. It's such a thin fabric that it doesn't add much weight to your fabric. So the first thing I do is I choose two contrasting fabrics. Choose a light and a dark fabric. I put the light as the background fabric and the dark on the top. And then over here, you see all of the tools that I'm going to use for this project. I have a pencil for tracing. I have a marker for tracing, for drawing some designs. These two scissors that you want to look at right over here, are my favorite scissors that I use. They are, um, they're just the perfect scissors for cutting fabric. This is the scissors that I use for cutting paper. And then I have a small rotary cutter that I use as well. There's my handy dandy fly, uh, not pliers. <laughs> what are these called? So I decide on what shape I'm going to start to use, I make multiple cuts of the same shape. So down here, for example, I'm going to use a little curved shape that I like, and I'm going to make a bunch of them. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to use all of them, but that I have them available so that when I line them up, I'll know which goes next to each other best. So I'm going to cut these apart, and these are the shapes that I'm gonna decide on using next. To place onto my sample piece. So here's my sample piece. I'm gonna start with the smallest piece. And I might go here, and then here, and here, here. And like that. And once I'm happy with the design of it, I'll take it over and press it. Bring it over here and then press it. And if you look down here, I'm gonna use my tweezers and just use them to move the fabric to exactly where I want it. I like to try to have about a quarter to an eighth of an inch between each of the dark fabrics next to the light fabrics. That's where I'm gonna save for my for my stitching. I'm do a quick press. And then I'm gonna take it back to the cutting board and cut these excess pieces off. Okay, bring it right up. 
All right, so here's the part that you should see. I, I pressed the stick of the Misty Fuse to my cutting board by accident. So that's what I was supposed to use, the parchment paper in between. I'm just gonna peel that off. And you can see all the stickiness of it. And that's why we were supposed to use parchment paper. But luckily that part's gonna be cut off anyway. And that's what I'm left with. And so I'm gonna keep drawing shapes, cutting shapes, and placing them back on here and slowly build from the center out until I get the shape that I want. Once you have your project cut into the shape that you like, you're going to take a piece of the Misty Fuse and then a piece of tool and layer it on top of your block so that it completely covers the whole design. Then you're going to take some of the parchment paper, put that on top, and use that to press down the Misty Fuse and the tool. You can see the layering right there and then what it's gonna look like after you press it. So if you can see all of the markings from the Misty Fuse and the lines from the tool, if you wanna avoid that and try to have it blended as best as possible, then the only way to do that is to have a lighter fabric. This dark gray is very contrasting, so it creates those lines and the visibility of the tool. If you use a fabric that's lighter, like this light gray, then you don't see the tool or the misty fuse quite as much on your final product. Next, you're just gonna take it over to your sewing machine and start quilting. Well, thanks for coming into my sewing room today and have a great day. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I will try to figure out that, you know, we're learning today. We'll try to figure out if we can optimize the playback a little bit. I know it's probably, it was lagging for me. It's probably lagging for you too, but we'll see if we can figure that out. But you, you got the gist of it. Deborah, that is the most gorgeous piece of work. I mean, it's just gorgeous. I'm just dazzled by it. Thanks. Did we have any questions come in? Let's see. I didn't see any questions. You can use some chat and mute. Mute yourself for a moment if you have any questions. Anybody have a question for Deborah? Nope. Okay. All right. Um, so, says, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Yannick raised her hand. There's yeah, I was going to ask about how long does it take you to quilt that um, piece? Because that just looked like a lot of itty bitty quilting. About how long would you say it took you to do? 
Uh, well, I haven't quilted that piece yet. It's actually still sitting right over here. Uh, it's still sitting here. I haven't quilted this yet. I have, um, I have something on the long arm. Uh, if you're familiar with the orange one, the orange clementine quilt that was 40 by 60 inches, that one took two and a half weeks on the long arm. So probably um, 30 or more hours to quilt. But the gray one from the picture took a little bit less, probably like a week and a half because the pieces were bigger. I have a question. So Deborah, where do you get your inspiration for that design? That was beautiful. Um, there's a few different places. There's a couple of just, I just start with a lot of really basic shapes. If you, if you look at it, there's a lot of basic shapes in it. There's circles, there's triangles, rectangles and squares. There's a lot of just basics in it. And I kind of mesh it together like graffiti. So I start from the middle with some circles and then put something around that and then something around that and something around that. And I'm constantly starting from the center. Um, sometimes I'll Google, um, what is it? Asian Pacific tattoos. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> because, yeah. I know because uh, Asian Pacific tattoos have some great shapes that I like. And not only that, it, um, it helps me with the transition from one shape to another. Sounds great. I just, can I say one more comment, Edie? Yeah, um, like doodling. The video was lagging a bit. I, I did a private text to Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. She said it's probably a bandwidth issue. Uh, but I just wanted to make a point that when we were, you are recording this, when we upload it to the YouTube channel, if you want to watch it uh, again, it's going to be perfect on the YouTube channel. I think we're just doing it live. So just a reminder that um, the videos we have will not be lagging if you see them on the YouTube channel. So good. good so point. Point. Beth asked, are you putting them in shows? So the first one, the Clementine Quilt, um, was in QuiltCon last year, and it's actually on the QuiltCon traveling show. I don't know, maybe it's in storage. I don't know if it's actually traveling anymore right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm going to enter a couple more and see if they'll get into next year's Quilt Guild. I, I only enter into um, the Modern Quilt Guild for shows right now. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it was great. And thank you so much, Paula, for putting that together. Um, I, I, if you looked at the, if you looked at the Sue Blywise uh, tutorial from the MQG, we sent the information in the email that had the meeting code. It's, it's interesting how she uses Misty Fuse and she uses it in a crazy variety of ways. I was fascinated by, because apparently she has a fear of pins and <laughs> she doesn't like to do binding. So it's, it's, it's amazing the amount of ways she uses Misty Fuse. So it's, it's definitely worth watching um, for that. So I think we are on to our virtual show and tell. Um, Paula, do you want to talk a little bit of, before we show this about submitting for show and tell? Sure. Um, we've been putting notices on uh, Instagram and on our private Facebook page, and I think we sent it out in the newsletter. Um, if you have a virtual or if you have a show and tell you'd like to show, just send it to me at my email address or at um, you know, the guild address, or just we'll look for it if you tag it. We tried to find everything that we could um, for this month's show and tell. And, and so if I found something you didn't actually submit to me, that's because I found it on your Facebook page or something. I did ask permission to a couple of people. But anyway, if you have something, we'd love to have it. We'd love to show it. So um, from our experience, it looks like the video might lag a little bit. If the music bothers you, turn it down. But I really am thankful for all the people who send it in. It's really fun. It's a fun slideshow. So um, if you guys are ready, I'll go ahead and show it. Yep. Okay. Can you see my screen on there, Edie? No, not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, see, I can see your starting screen sharing. Okay. There we there. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, could you see it all? <laughs> yes, love it. You guys have been busy. I'm not at all surprised. Um, I love seeing what you're all working on. It makes me feel a little closer to all of you. That's that's fantastic. And thank you, Paula, once again for compiling that. I just um, want to say we got a lot of uh, UFO pictures of yeah. uh, Finnish UFOs. So congratulations to everyone. <laughs> Now's the time, right? You have no excuse. <laughs> um, Deborah, have you got anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, I don't have anything else just to mention if you want hopefully if you go back later and watch those videos in real time on YouTube on your own channel then they won't lag like they did here if anybody has any um, advice for that we're thinking that it's because the amount of people that we have on the YouTube channel but if you have any advice for us or if you have any content that you think you'd like to share in the upcoming meetings we do have some programming ideas um next the next three months for programming we're gonna concentrate a little bit on japanese quilting so right. be sure to stay tuned in for our lagging video next month on japanese <laughs> quilting <laughs> thank you deborah um i'm going to give you a little bit of homework to help us out uh we had quite a bit of the, the one of the reasons we want to do a long armors panel is because when we did our little brainstorming session at our meeting in november a lot of people said i want to know how I prep a quilt for a long armor, what are the common mistakes that long armors see. So I, I've got all of that, I'll go back through that, but we want to present our long armors with a little questionnaire that they can answer. So if you have questions for the long armors, can you either email me or email the guild with what you might have? Um, so look for our announcements about that. Um, that is, that's not gonna take place in a regular meeting time. We have some other things planned. We will obviously be meeting virtually next month um, after that, we'll see, but in all honesty, I mean, let's just be realistic. It's going to be a while before we're all together in a room, but I, I think this is working nicely. I hope you agree. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, just watch your email from the Guild. Thank you so much to all of you who are working so hard to help us out and um, stay safe, stay well. Have a great month. We'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Edie. Bye. Well.